Is the school for good and evil on Netflix good or is it evil? No, that doesn't work. What is up, Netflix fans? Welcome back to my channel. The School for Good and Evil is based on a beloved story. It has the ideas in place and the cast, but can it execute? We're going to talk about it. Best friends Sophie and Agatha find themselves on opposing ends of an epic battle when they're swept away into an enchanted school where aspiring heroes and villains are trained to protect the balance between good and evil. And this movie is rated PG-13 for violence and action, some frightening images. It's not something that I think a 13-year-old would be afraid of while watching, so it's definitely for families. That's what it's conveyed to be, and maybe even a younger audience than they're, you know, shooting for here, because while watching this, I felt as if it's something that's not quite hitting my age group even as well as they want it to, right? You have some scary moments, and the violence in here occasionally doesn't hold back. That's why I'm watching this, you know, 20 minutes in. I'm like, oh, it's a family film. And then we'll have one scene or one character death to where I'm sitting back going, oh, well, that was extremely violent. And our characters are using something called blood magic. And I'm like, okay, well, we're getting pretty intense and, like it says, frightening in some of these scenes. So I do appreciate the occasional veering into that darkness. And it felt like a story that should have been darker altogether, but it also, it feels like something that is shooting for even a younger audience than me. Maybe the teenage audience and people who will be able to maybe gravitate a bit more towards these characters or book readers. Now, I can't speak on how this captures the book, how it captures the story, but you have a fascinating story here. You have both of these schools side by side. I was getting Hogwarts vibes when we first enter that world, and I like the fact that they're just total opposites from each other. You have one extremely icky and gothic location where one of our characters is dropped into, and that character doesn't feel as if she should be there. So she goes in and completely out of place with some of the most, like, uh, types of beings you can imagine. They're supposed to be evil, and you get shades of that, but I've seen more evil people before and then you have the school for good and everyone's dressed up it's nice the, the fancy clothes the beautiful colors you have the knights coming in and they think they're doing everything right and the school for good is trying to be good the school for evil well they're trying to be evil they go into these individual classrooms and you have professors that are like yeah we're, we're evil we're going to do evil things it's a little cliche I mentioned Sky High because that was a school for superheroes, and it plays it in like this quirky, young, youthful way, and that's exactly what this movie does, except the school for good. You have descendants of characters that you will recognize, so that was really cool. Same for the school for evil. Uh, but the entire point of this story is to show how this friendship between Sophie and Agatha progresses when they are dropped in these locations, and how maybe everything that they imagine, one, definitely isn't playing out when they first get dropped there, but two, could be heading in a very different direction from what even the professors in the school could see because there is this backstory here that we are given at the beginning that kind of created the schools for good and evil and that backstory comes into play because there is a mystery with this movie and something that we are building up to that yeah, you're probably going to be able to see coming from a mile away, but they're at least trying to keep you on the edge of your seats as you progress. So I appreciate the fact that the movie tried to do that, even though there are several reveals in this film that the writing just doesn't do a good enough job of hiding from you. And maybe the intentions were to hint so hard that you kind of see what's coming, but I don't think that's what it's trying to do. I just didn't find anything creative about the execution of that. You also have a massive supporting cast here. Yes, our two leads, and they are the focal point throughout the entire movie, but Carrie Washington, Lawrence Fishburne, Charlize Theron, who is embracing this evil role with her mannerisms. Show y'all Kate Blanchett, so it's like you have the most stacked cast of all time, and each of them are giving a committed performance. The costumes are a huge standout with this movie. They look incredible, but the characters, they tend to fit inside of a very cliche bubble, and it's almost as if the movie is afraid to take an extra creative step to give you more with them. I just didn't really find all that much chemistry within, and they're trying to do things here that allow this to stand out, A, and then B, uh, they want to make it a franchise. It's very obvious from the beginning they want to make this Netflix's next big thing, but I just don't think the tone works all that well for the story because it's extra quirky in moments. The filmmaking is unable to capture some of the epicness that the movie is conveying and putting off, so I felt 
that the source material was providing a lot of good things and they could have, you know, dove a bit deeper into that to make the story more interesting. But the filmmaking here I was struggling with. I mean, even the first big action scene that we get that starts this entire thing, it was choppy. It was jumpy. I, I didn't really feel like I knew exactly what was going on. It's kind of falling into a similar formula as some of these other Netflix coming of age movies that did not feel like it fit in this world whatsoever. I think I felt Agatha's character arc just a bit more than Sophie's. Both performances are actually really compelling. I liked the leads, but uh, something happens to Sophie as we're going, and it feels so quick, and then that progression, I wasn't buying all that much. I just didn't like the way that it was written, so I'm not entirely sure what it was going for. And I look at our director here, Paul Feig, Bridesmaid, Spy, The Office, A Simple Favor, and this movie feels less like that and more like his ghost Ghostbusters movie, which I wasn't a big fan of. It's not that bad, but that's kind of what it felt like. Before I give you guys my score for this movie, let me know your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed this video and you want to drop a like, that would help this channel. The School for Good and Evil features an excellent cast and some fantastic costumes, but the script is unable to capture the right tonal balance. The major reveals are obvious from the start, and it all feels so familiar. There's potential within this story, but it did not fully come together. That's why I'm going a 48% with my score. But if you enjoyed this movie, if you liked some of those moments, please let me know why down below and uh, let me know your thoughts on the source material that's something i'm not familiar with uh, so maybe others will feel differently thanks for watching see you soon